Hi guys, today we will be discussing about the flavors chemistry. So let's start with this one. Uh, actually, the flavors uh, that is available in different forms in different food items. So uh, basically. Uh, these flavor substances basically these represents an extremely wide range of the chemical structures and that can be derived from most of the food from the amino acids from the carbohydrates from the uh, is uh, sim, uh, organic acid and so so on so these have a stimulating taste or aroma uh, receptors that are present uh, in our uh, nose that is present for uh, on our tongue so these receptors that are responsible for sensation of the flavors that is a basically taste or aroma combination of the taste or aroma so the nerve system that is involved for physiological responses that tells you about the flavor uh, at your in your minds so uh, basically we have to study the chemistry of these flavoring substances in the next few slides we will be looking at uh, that chemistry so there uh, are so many senses within the human body that is a smell, taste, sight, feeling and sound uh, so all is actually involved or related with the flavor, flavors perception of the uh, flavors so uh, if we have to determine it chemically these flavoring substances there are machine analysis that is being used you may use gas chromatography uh, LCMS, uh, liquid chromatographic technique, um, FTIR, and so many techniques, mass spectrophotometry, so many techniques. So, sensory talking about the sensory assessment of the flavor, we are doing the sensory analysis based on our senses, human senses. Taste and flavor, for example, that can be determined by the human senses. So there is a determination limit for these flavor for a person. Maybe that vary from person to person. A person have some different limit, you will have different limit for this flavor compounds thresholds so a range of concentration of a selected how we can determine that uh, threshold level a range of concentration of a selected flavor compound in a defined medium water or milk or air that is presented to the sensory panelist and each panelist indicates whether or not the compounds that can be detected and this concentration range where at least half of the panelists can detect the compound when we say uh, for a specific XYZ component food component or the flavor component uh, that have a threshold level of 0.5 microgram per liter it's mean they, it's mean that at least half of the panelists they detected the, that compound at that limit and for utterance in some of the taste what they are looking for they are looking for sweet bitter and umami type of the characteristics and so on there are so many the initial perception event involves the selective binding of a flavor molecule to a specific receptor. We have taught that these receptors are present in on tongue and your 
nasal cavity. So there are specific receptor proteins in the membrane of an appropriate receptor cell that binds these substances. So we are now talking about one of the important substances that is called as the bitter type of the substances. That there are so many bitter type of the substances that is allowed in food as a food additive. For example, we will be looking three or four in this slide. First of all, quinine. Basically, it's a bitter alkaloid and considered as a standard for the bitter taste sensation. The detection threshold level for quinine hydrochloride is about 10 ppm. Below this, this cannot be detected. It's the bitter taste that cannot be detected below this limit. And where it is allowed, soft drinks, bitterness is an important flavor attribute for some soft drinks, for example, cola drinks. Caffeine is moderately bitter at 150 to 250 ppm in water. And that may occur in coffee, tea, cola, nurse. Then theopromine, that is a part of tea in, of many type of the tea that also have a bitter taste similar to the caffeine. So caffeine is added in concentration up to 200 ppm to soft cola beverages. We have seen this the addition of the caffeine in, in the energy beverages as well. I, I will not name any energy beverage here but they contain the inner in, energy beverages but not more than 250 200 ppm that is the limit then uh, we talked about the hops again and that is a bitter substances and uh, added into the beers beer have a specific bitterness in it so bitterness contributed by some unusual isoprenoid derived compound that is also important then citrus fruit that contains several type of the flavor known glycosides in it for example one of that is the naringen that is a predominant flavor known found in grapefruit and some bitter oranges so these are some of the bitter substances there are so many bitter substances then we talk about the salty taste substances uh, classically we are taking the sodium chloride in our daily life for sodium chloride as a salty substance that is the most used uh, but there are several other substances that have the salty taste for example lithium chloride but we are not using this one in the food items because that has a toxic properties in general these salts exhibit complex taste usually described as consisting of Psychological mixture of classic, sweet, bitter, sour, and salty perceptive components. Since foods flavored with these substitute have different, usually less desirable taste than those flavored with NACL. Renewed efforts are being expanded to better understand the basic mechanism of the salty taste and in the development of salt substitutes. So we, we are using sometimes the low sodium products as the salt substitutes that have the salty taste almost that is the same taste as the sodium chloride and that is available in our markets. Then we are talking about the sour taste substances, sour tastes normally these are the stick in nature substances and uh, have a capacity to release the protons to the receptor cell membranes through an ion channels that result in the closure to the sodium flow and depolarization. There are sodium potassium channel within the membrane system actually you know that. The qualitative aspects of the sour taste response are poorly understood. Contrary to 
popular belief that the acid strength in a solution does not appear to be the major determinant of the sour sensation. So there are several features that are important, molecular weight, size, and our all polarity of the molecule, acid molecule especially, and uh, organic acid molecule containing the CWH in it. Then we will be talking about the umami taste substances. There are so many taste substances. Maybe it's new for you. Umami taste, basically, if you look the taste of the monosodium 1-glutamate MSG. So that, that is a typical umami taste. Other substances, for example, 5-riponucleotides, that is called inosine 5-monophosphate, but are 5-IMP. And another substance is guanosine 5-monophosphate. If you look at uh, uh, the labeling of uh, chicken cubes available in our market, that contain these kind of the substances, MSG, ribonucleotides, inosine mono, 5 monophosphate, 5 IMP, 5 uh, GMP. These are available on that chicken flavor. These are the component of these. So responses because specific taste receptor that have the specific taste receptor. So responses have been detected for those receptors. You may substances contribute a delicious mouth-watering taste to the, your food. Uh, for example, uh, in chicken cubes, uh, in different kind of a soups in different kind of the liquid noodles. So excess of their independent detection th threshold and they modify and enhance the flavor levels. So there are so many substances. So their effects are prominent and desirable in the flavors of the vegetables, meat, poultry, fish, shellfish, aged cheeses, especially the glutamate and the two three riponucleotides so generally these derivatives have substitutions on the purine moiety in the second position a synergistic interaction occurs between MSG and the five riponucleotides when they are added simultaneously providing both the umami taste so there uh, is some evidence to indicate that some of the flavor enhancing properties of the umami compounds results from their joint occupancy of the receptor sites involved in perception of sweet, sour, quality, and bitter sensation. Another sensation associated with the food that is called as a kokami taste. Actually, these term that was originated from the Japan. Again, this is the principal precursor for the characterization of volatile aroma compound in garlic and onions. And we will be looking at how these flavor substances are developed in next lecture. Basically, these are sulfur substituted cysteine. You know cysteine is an amino acid. It's a sulfur substitute. Amino sulfoxide amino acid. Thus, although flavors of food containing garlic, in for example, pasta sauces, sorted meats, may not exhibit readily distinguishable volatile garlic flavor notes. Their flavors are perceived as extremely complex, full and palatable because of presence of S to propionyl 116 sulfoxide. We will look at how this substance to propionyl l cysteine sulfoxide that is formed during the flavor generation. We will see in next lecture in some slides. So we close our lecture here.